Hi, I'm Victoria Blamey. I am from Santiago, Chile. I'm the executive chef at Gotham Bar and Grill, and I'm here to do oven baked Chilean empanada. First, we're gonna do the filling, which is called pino. Pino is basically a mix of meat, diced onions, paprika, cumin, salt. You don't want it to be more onion than meat. It ruins the flavor, because who likes to eat an empanada of just onion? I used to be a vegetarian for seven years. I became vegetarian when I was 15 years old. You cannot make vegetarian empanada. I will say no way. People have done the mozzarella thing, no. We do make them, I've seen them. I will never eat them. I did like being vegetarian. I liked it more even when I was living in England. The vegetarian population there was huge. And obviously in Chile you're like, you have no idea. If you ever go to Chile or Argentina, it's it's like I think you kill a cow every 30 seconds. The National Day or Independence Day and you're celebrating and you do asado, it's literally just beef. So the important part about cooking the onion is that you need to sweat it down all the way. It is better if you do this filling the day before. It does taste better. All the flavors are gonna be um, integrated better. While we're cooking the onion, we're going to cut the beef. The kind of cut that you guys want is usually between flank steak or eye round. Or if you guys wanna buy ground beef, it's not a big deal. Just make sure that whenever you buy ground, it depends on the dial that they ground the meat so it's not pasty like basically baby food. And you want uh, small dice. But now that this is like halfway there, I would add on paprika, like a teaspoon, cumin. A tip, which might sound like a little weird, it is from the recipe, but actually, you know, people do use it a lot, is that we use uh, bouillon cubes to flavor sofrito. It is like a very home-cooked technique. Usually people try to dissolve it in water or something. You can do that, or you can just crumble this into your filling. So at the end of the day, you're gonna put some wine in this too and cook it out. Now, that means that you need to be careful with the salt. I'm gonna add on wine, like half a cup, I would say, because wine makes everything better. Even better when you drink it, though. Now it's getting nice and soft. We're gonna add on the meat. Touch of salt, a little bit more of the wine. I'm gonna add on a touch of chili powder, which is like a spice element. We're gonna let this cook for like between an hour, hour and a half, maybe a little bit more. Try it every 15 minutes, stir it, try the flavor, see how it's developing. Cover this. Our filling now is made, right? Resting, cooling down. We're about to make the dough. I'm just gonna be brave and do it by hand. And we're gonna melt our butter first. Put the baking powder in. Sift your flour if you can, especially if you're gonna do it by hand. Now I'm just mixing the baking powder in. Crack the eggs in the meantime. The melted butter. I wanna put my white wine. This recipe that is more traditional, it has either white wine or vinegar. It will make the dough be a little bit more flaky. Obviously flavor as well. And then you just start mixing with your hands. So you're looking for a sandy texture. We're gonna add on the egg yolk. You go on the bench. Make a little well, and then you're gonna start incorporating water with the salt. You see that the dough is sort of coming together. I wanna put a little bit more water. Be careful when you add on water, because sometimes you think it needs water, but also it needs to be, you need to keep kneading the dough. You know when it's ready, because it looks uniform, this is like still Frankenstein. The funny thing with the smell, it really reminds me of Chile. We have a big German influence, and a lot of Germans, well, after World War II, obviously, they did go to the south of Chile and a lot also to Argentina. German cuisine is really important in our culture. So I grew up eating a lot of that. Right now, the dough is pretty firm still. I don't wanna take it any further because like I said, it has to be firm, soft to the touch, it still bounces back. We'll wrap the dough and let it rest in the fridge. Our dough has rested. Our filling is made. So this is chill. We have our olives, our uh, golden raisins, egg. We do need an egg wash uh, to paint the dough after uh, the empanada is done. The dough is much more smoother than it was before. Knead the dough again, just a little bit. You wanna take that chill out, but you can see and it feels like, yes, it's firm, but it's super smooth, okay? But it's not a super soft dough. We just want to take like half of this. It needs to be, I believe, like a little less than half an inch, I would say. 
Now you see that it's not a fat dough, it doesn't attach to the, the wood or anything. Now be careful with that, because that means if you take too long, also it's gonna dry out. So I think we can get three. September 18th is a national day for Chile. So that's when you usually eat a lot of empanadas. A lot of places in Chile, even though if it's not national day, of course they'll sell empanadas, but it's kind of unusual to eat them throughout the year. The first thing you do is you put the filling in, towards more to the bottom than the top, just because of the fold that you need to make. Everything has to be cold. You don't want this filling to be sitting out. I'm gonna just cut the egg. I'm gonna put an olive. And raisin-wise, we'll put like three. If you don't like raisins, sure, don't put them in, but if you wanna have the full Chilean experience, put the raisin in. I just put a little bit of water, so when you fold it, it doesn't fall apart. Now this is the trick part. So you press here, and don't be shy of pressing. And then you fold right here, and then right there. It's like a moment of glory. So we're gonna try it again. So again, press down, press with your thumb, okay, all the way here. Then why do you leave that space? Is so you can make that fold later to the top and the bottom. Press with your finger also on the top of the bottom and the same here. So squaring that off. And there you go. Now brush it with the egg wash. It's just one egg yolk and like two tablespoons of milk. The egg wash gives you nice shininess and color. Now we're ready to go in the oven. Little kiss. And at 350. So it's been about 30 to 35 minutes um, that we put our babies in the oven. We're gonna go and check them out. They look amazing. So this is a oven baked Chilean empanada. Oh my God, they're juicy. It's juicy. Oh my God, that's pretty much on the money. It smells like, it smells like chili. That's how it smells like. So you know what's funny? It's the smell between cumin and the dough that reminds you of home. It's that you get part of the egg and the olive. Let me tell you, this is pretty freaking good. Yeah. Mmm. It's pretty authentic, but this is yum yum. That's what you need to call yum yum empanada. Now for this amazing recipe, click the link below. I am obsessed with mayonnaise and obsessed with cornichons. Okay, if you wanna put it that way. Or you can put tartar sauce on your cornichon, huh? How about that?